Hello everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, September 29th. Now before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the Shell Point TV team, SBTV Supervisor Josh Milton, or as some of you who have already met him have called him, the new guy. Welcome to Shell Point, Josh. Thank you, Dan. It's great to be here, and uh, I look forward to meeting all of you as I make my rounds around Shell Point in the coming months. Well, that sounds great, Josh. Well, we're going to turn the reins of the show over to you today, great. so take it away. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Dan. We have a great show for you today. Coming up, Herb Sklar joins us for some insightful information about his academy class, live figure drawing using charcoal and pencils. Professor Adrian Kerr is in studio for a sneak peek at his academy class. Did the Chinese Ming treasure ships reach America 70 years before Columbus? And information you need to know about Medicare. Joni Reagan from Medicare Billing tells us about the most important health connections program of the year. And it's coming up this Thursday. You don't want to miss this one. But first, let's go to the movies. Tonight's film at the Social Center is the 1951 movie Moonlight Bay, starring Doris Day and Gordon McRae. This fun little musical tells the story of the Winfield family at the turn of the 20th century. The film gets rolling at 6.45 tonight in the Social Center on the island. Tomorrow, don't forget your cup of joe. It's International Coffee Day. Whether it's iced, decaf, lattes, or cappuccinos, come celebrate with your friends and neighbors. Treats will be served, prizes will be given out, and best of all, plenty of jolts of java will be available. The celebration begins at 10.15 tomorrow morning in the Social Center on the island. And coming next Monday, a special LifeQuest event you won't want to miss. Take care of yourself. This presentation from Sandra Colonitis, the facilitator of the Complete Health Improvement Program, or CHIP, for all of Lee County, will inspire you to take care of yourself so you can be successful in the other areas of your life. Her goal is to encourage everyone to live a balanced life mind, body, and spirit. Don't miss out on this special event. Take care of yourself. Next Monday, October 6th at 2 o'clock in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. For more information or to sign up for any of the activities we've talked about, stop by the Island Service Desk in the Resident Activity Center on the island or call 454-2282 or the Woodlands Service Desk at 454-2054. Well, for most of us, Christopher Columbus and his men on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria were the ones that discovered America. But some historians suggest that perhaps explorers from China set foot on our shores dozens of years before Columbus. Professor Adrian Kerr recently sat down with Terry Kolath to discuss that very topic as a prelude to tomorrow's academy class, Did the Chinese Ming Treasure Ships Reach America 70 Years Before Columbus? Hello everyone, I'm here with Professor Adrian Kerr. We're talking about a very intriguing class in his lineup this fall. Did the Chinese Ming treasure ships reach America 70 years before Columbus? Well, you're going to enlighten us, Professor Kerr? Well, it's great to be back at Shell Point. Nice to see you, Terry. Um, this is one of the most fascinating uh, stories which has bubbled out of the history pages in the last uh, 50 to 100 years and really reached the focus in the West about uh, 15 years ago when a strange English sea captain decided <laughs> to make a name for himself. Um, Gavin Menzies wrote a book, uh, 1421, When the Chinese Discovered America. And it's been an interesting talking point. And what I'll do in this session will be take you through the historical background to the suggestion and also we'll look for clues and facts and why somebody could conceive of such an idea and of course it would be revolutionary if it was true because mm -hmm. 70 years before Christopher Columbus arrived someone having discovered America would change our history books forever but it's in the uh, question mark phase of historical analysis at the moment but the background is, is, is fascinating um, the Ming dynasty um, was one of the most famous it lasted for 300 years and in the early part of the Ming Dynasty, um, a great emperor um, took the throne and um, he uh, surrounded himself by trusted um, advisors who were eunuchs. 
Ah. And uh, they could not have a family of their own, so they relied entirely on the king. The king had taken over the empire by force, so he wanted loyal people around him. Um, and he promoted these advisors to various important positions that he could trust them with. Um, and the one that he um, had, had encouraged from a teenager was a captured uh, Western Chinese gentleman who later became known as Zheng He. Um, and he was an Islamic um, um, boy who was found during one of the Chinese exploits in the west of the um, empire. And he was brought to the court and became a favorite of the emperor. And the emperor groomed him for greater things. And the emperor decided that it's about time that China showed its strength. And the Ming dynasty was one of the wealthiest, strongest, and the greatest of the dynasties in, in China. And to do this, he decided that he would build a fleet of what we call treasure ships. These were the largest ships ever seen uh, on the planet at that time. And to give you an example of how big these ships were, Christopher Columbus ship was about a fifth of the size of these monster ships. Oh they would have four or five hundred sailors on board. There were 20 or 30 of these that sailed together. It's a total flotilla of maybe 300 ships. What would you do with this navy? Well, it sailed from Nanjing, or Nanking, depending on how you, how you call it, um, south to Vietnam and on to Malaya, mm -hmm. and then down to the Indonesian islands and over west. And it's their movement west that interests all of us, and how far west did they get? There were seven great voyages, and they were very extensively documented, not only by the captain, the Admiral of the Sea, Zheng He, and his assistants, but also in the Chinese annals. And so, although they were covered up in later years, we have quite a lot of evidence of how long these journeys took, how many people were involved, and the countries they visited. The intention of the treasure ships was not actually to get treasure in the sense of capturing cities. Um, they were peaceful most of the time, and they were there to set up ambassadorial links. So mm -hmm. the ships would contain um, ambassadors who had been trained uh, in China to speak the language of the countries they were visiting. Um, oh, and nice. their favorite was Ceylon or Sri Lanka, and that was a great Chinese trading port, as was Malacca. Um, and they'd drop off the ambassadors, and they'd exchange ambassadors. So they'd leave a Chinese ambassador in Ceylon or in Burma or in India, um, and then they would take their ambassadors back to China. And it was a, an in integration, if you like, of China into the rest of the world to show how strong um, um, the China was. It wasn't really to conquer new countries. It was mm -hmm. more just to show the flag. And very successful it was, but hugely expensive. Mm -hmm. The issue at, at hand is how far west did they get? We know they got to the east coast of Africa. They got to Mombasa mm. and Malawi uh, in Kenya. And they, we know that because they brought back giraffes. And we have a picture of a giraffe in the royal annals um, as, a, as an animal that had been brought back, as well as hippopotamus, lots of ivory, and lots of exotic animals. So we know these weren't just made-up stories right. or legends. They actually happened. And the dates and the times and how many people involved and the, and the things that they saw, all completely consistent. Hmm. One of the voyages was recorded as the longest. And uh, it's a mystery as to how further west it went. And the Menzies book, which has been a bestseller, um, proposes that, in fact, the Chinese junks, these huge junks, pushed south, went round the Cape uh, of Good Hope and into the Atlantic Ocean, crossed the Atlantic Ocean, and ended up in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And thereby, he claims that the Chinese discovered America 70 years before Columbus. And I will show in the talk some of the supporting d documents okay. and some of the questionable uh, arguments that he used. Um, but the sad thing is that they, after seven fantastic journeys, whether they discovered America and Australia or not, we'll never probably know. Mm -hmm. um, but the new uh, neo-Confucius um, people who took over after they, that emperor died um, decided to shut down the fleets. They were all laid up. All the records were either um, burnt or buried, um, and people were forbidden to have these big ships again. And about 40 years later, they're all destroyed, and China went into its enclosed um, uh, phase of its life um, and didn't want to have contact with the outside world because foreigners could only bring bad things. So no matter what, we're going to be very grateful to hear this information. It's a fascinating story. Oh, thank you, Adrian. Yeah. We look forward to it. Okay, you can join us on Tuesday, September 30th. We'll be in the Grand Cypress Room as usual at 10 o'clock, and you can sign up right at the door. A fascinating topic you'll want to hear more about in tomorrow's class. Another fascinating subject for many people, drawing, specifically figure drawing.
And Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve will present a five-week academy class on this art form starting tomorrow. Here he is now with more on his class, live figure drawing using charcoal and pencils. Hello everyone, I'm here with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. We're talking about a course Herb is teaching for us in the Fall Academy of Lifelong Learning, live figure drawing. You know, as you said, teaching. This is one of the classes I think I do the least amount of teaching. Really? Yeah, because we have a wonderful model and she's really fantastic, Kate Sullivan. Uh -huh. And the class just gets up there with that charcoal and I just have fun and do it. Now, if somebody wants some help, I will, but, but I don't really teach anatomy at that class. Uh -huh. So it's kind of uh, uh, self-learning or at your own pace, but there will be help if you want it. And when we start off with doing these very quick uh, poses, 20 seconds, uh -huh. which is like, like that, you know, and, and you'd be surprised what you can do with it. You can get the rhythm of the body, and then we advance to a minute and five minutes, and then uh, we start some long poses. And some people don't do the whole figure, they do a portrait. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's at any level, you know, if you just want to have fun and learn how to do a figure drawing. Um, this is something that was studied in every art school for years, for years. I know, it, and going way back, they would spend six years learning to draw the, draw the figure, you know. Why is the figure um, so difficult to draw? Is it really, or do we just think that it is because we can see a person? No, I think it is difficult to draw, and I think it takes a lot of training because um, every part is in a different perspective, right. and, and proportion plays a part to it, and the rhythm of the body, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun, and I would say, Outside of um, Michelangelo, nobody became an expert. <laughs> you know, but we're all trying and we're all doing it and having a lot of fun at it. And how nice to be able to actually look at a body when you're trying to draw one. I mean, it's surprising that our arms are as long as our legs or, you know, whatever. Right. You know, when, when we see one and try to draw it. That, that's extremely helpful. It is. It is absolutely. It's, it's not like drawing from a, a photograph where it's very flat, two-dimensional. Right. You have a three-dimensional body in front uh -huh. of you. And uh, it, it's, it's really quite interesting. And, and I think the charcoal uh, makes it even easier because you can do it very quickly and just have the rhythm of it's It's a little bit like uh, going back to kindergarten, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> playing with the quick strokes and stuff. But, but is it something that an artist has to do to learn to free up? You can, so you, you, but you, you can sit there and make it very tight too, uh -huh. you know. But, but we don't start out that way. We, the warm ups are the very quick sketches, and, and I think that loosens you up and, uh -huh. and you keep going from there. It's learning to see. That's what it comes down to. Right. You're learning to see, and, and this will take you into anything else you paint or draw or photograph. You're learning to see. Interesting. So it's something that would be valuable no matter what you want to paint or draw. Abs in the absolutely. And, and I feel so arty, so dirty and chucky. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun besides. Now you've taught this course before. What is surprising to you about this course and how your students react to it? Well, first of all, everybody seems to really enjoy it. And, and, and I think that some of them get shocked about how good they are, <laughs> which is really and very learn nice. They from each other. And they do learn from, we do show each other our drugs and we do learn from each other. And, and it's, it really is a wonderful thing. Good. Thank you so much, Herb. All right, live figure drawing using charcoal and pencils five Tuesdays. There's still room if you'd like to give it a try. Thanks, Terry and Herb. Now, a program that you shouldn't miss. This Thursday in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands, Joni Reagan and her Medicare billing team will be on hand to pass along some extremely important information to you about your Medicare open enrollment options. If you only plan on attending one Health Connections program this year, this one is it. Here with more on open enrollment are Mary Franklin and Joni Reagan. I'm Mary Franklin with an important Health Connection program promotion. If you don't go to any Health Connection program the entire year, this is one you should attend. It is Medicare Open Enrollment 2015. It's going to take place on Thursday, October 2nd in the Grand Cypress Room at 10 a.m. Mark your calendars. Joni will be there with her entire medical mm -hmm. billing team. Joni Reagan, thank you so much for being here to promote this program. 
It is so important because what you chose as your insurance last year mm -hmm. or five years ago mm -hmm. may not be the best option for you now. Right. And you want to get the most for the bang for your right. buck, right? Yeah. All the rules change every year. Mm -hmm. What each insurance company offers each year is right. different. Medicare changes. Mm -hmm. How do you and your team keep that up to date? Well, it's difficult even for us. Um, but we, you know, we do it 24 hours a day, uh, you know, eight hours a day. Yes. Um, we do it all the time, and so we know what to look for, and we really just want residents to um, to come to the meeting or call us if they can't come, and we'll help them decide what's best for their situation. Right. Now you're probably go you're going to cover the the most popular plans that are out there and kind of go through, but you want people to bring questions and answers right. on what they have because they may have had a life change um, mm -hmm. with their medical right. situation of what they needed if last year is not mm -hmm. the same as what they need this year, right. um, and you also want to be prepared for the future, the right. unknown, right. Um, and and you want to be secure in knowing that if something did happen, you be okay and your your, mm -hmm. your wallet will yeah, survive, yeah. Right? right? Yeah. We um, also um, understand how all of the insurances work with Medi with with uh, Shell Point mm -hmm. and the Pavilion and the Medical Center. We can tell you which ones are in and out of network. Mm -hmm. So we talk about um, all the lingo with insurance. We talk about um, deductibles, co-pays, um, in and out of network, what that means. We talk about traditional Medicare, mm -hmm. um, um, Medicare Advantage plans and, and the pluses and minuses of each one of them and then you decide and we tell you all that and then you can decide how you um, want it to go further. Right, okay. Well this is so important um, to have that information mm -hmm. so that you know and can make a wise decision and know here at Shell Point. Right. You know, can always pick up and call that 1-800 number, but they're not going to know yeah. you as intimately as, right. as you know. And um, open enrollment, what are the dates for open enrollment this year? Uh, October 15th to December 7th. Okay, all right. So your meeting is before, so it's right. leading up. So as soon as open enrollment starts, then you can have, the residents are really armed and dangerous yes. with all yeah. of their information, yeah. right? Yes, and we have, um, we're going to have the meeting explain everything. We'll give them a handout so they can take it home and, and think about things. Um, they can definitely call us if they have detailed questions. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we welcome the questions because we want to help our residents decide what's best for them. Okay. There's just so many choices, and they get inundated with um, letters in the mail about this plan's cheap and it's the best there is and, and phone calls and stuff on TV, and we just want to be able to help them. Yeah. It's a lot of information mm -hmm. coming at everyone. Yeah. And um, yeah. your office is located on the second floor right. of the medical center, but this this session I think will be very important for everybody to come to because you can learn someone may ask a question that you right. didn't even think right. that it mattered and mm -hmm. it makes the light bulb turn mm -hmm. on so yeah. this is going to be a great program sign up for it once again get your calendars out because it is on Thursday October 2nd 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room free advice free help and um, you will learn a tremendous amount about your Medicare open enrollment mm -hmm. coming up very quickly here. Yeah. So I'm Mary Franklin along with Joni. Make it a happy and healthy day. Thank you, ladies. Again, you don't want to miss this program. Now it's time to cover all of Monday's happenings, Academy News, menus, and Village Church connections. Right after this word from David Howenstein with a preview of his radio show on TV, Listening to the Words. Did you ever hear this Q&A? How are computers like air conditioning? They work great until you open windows. If you like that one, you're going to love the Abbott and Costello takeoff on computers. One of the features on this week's edition of Listening to the Words. You'll also be expected to remember typewriters and compare notes with two shell pointers who will remind you of the challenges of growing older while another Shell Point resident points out an older, colorful character. Take a few minutes to listen to the admonition, Don't Look Back, and one of the best poems I've ever read about making the best of it. 
All this from the best radio show you're likely to hear. This is David Howenstein inviting you to just press channel 12 for a new program on Shell Point TV all day, every day this week. Or if you've learned to make the computer do your bidding, you can browse your way to shellpoint.net slash listening and click program 165. Either way, thank you for listening to the words. Hi, I'm Jill Aldrink, and I'm here with Bev Chandley to share with you what's happening today. At 8.30, they head out for Beach Day. Island Pickup starts at 8.30, Woodlands at 8.40, and Eagles Preserve at 8.50. At 8.45, you can play virtual bowling in the Resident Activity Center. 9.15, you have some options. There's billiards in the Resident Activity Center, as well as pottery downstairs in the pottery studio. At 10 o'clock, men's match play doubles tennis will be meeting at the tennis courts. At 10.30, the men's disciple study group will be meeting at the game room in the Woodlands. Table tennis clinic will take place in the Tarpon Room at 10.45. And we finish the morning at 11.30 with the Health Connection Specifics in Cardio Conditioning in the Health Club. That is currently a closed event. Bev, what's happening this afternoon? Well, Jill, we're going to start at 12 noon. We're going to start with Mahjong. That'll be in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. And then we'll go to 115 for advanced table tennis held in the Tarpon Room. Also at 115, we have the game of Samba at the Resident Activity Center. 145, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1. That's in the Health Club on the island, currently full. 2 o'clock, it's time for the Beady-Eyed Bead Club. They meet in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. We have another Health Connections class at 3 o'clock. Pilates Stretch, that's down in the Health Club. Another Health Connections class at 3.30, Aqua Agility and Conditioning. That's held at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. At 6.30, we have Duplicate Bridge. That'll be in the game room of the Woodlands. And then we'll jump to 6.45 for movie night on Moonlight Bay, a 1951 film that'll be in the Social Center. Well, that wraps up our activities for Monday. We, we're glad you joined us, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy Information for Monday. At 10.15, our Facebook Basics on the iPad class continues in the Manatee Room on the island. At 10.30, Appreciating Words welcomes everyone to the Oak Room in the Woodlands. At 1.15, Making Word Work for You continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. I'd like to tell you about two new classes coming up tomorrow. We start live figure drawing using charcoal and pencils with our instructor, Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. Did the Chinese Ming treasure ships reach America 70 years before Christopher Columbus? Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is braised pork with stewed apples and cabbage. The dinner special is all home cooking night for eleven ninety five, and the soup of the day is tomato. In the Allen Cafe for lunch, the special is a grilled chicken breast with mixed greens and fresh berries for seven twenty five. The dinner special is Western bacon cheeseburger with onion rings for eight twenty five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and uh, this is a, a special week for us where we are making the final preparations to re-enter uh, the newly renovated sanctuary. And as uh, most of you know, we have called this whole project Refresh and Renew. Our sanctuary is being refreshed with a number of different dimensions, and we're also looking forward to the renewal part of this, which really from the very beginning with our church, uh, we focused on spiritual renewal. We didn't want to simply uh, do something to the sanctuary without doing something to ourselves as well, and so we wanted to be a renewed people as we entered the sanctuary. And this is a very exciting week for us because after five months, uh, we are finally preparing to go back into the sanctuary. And uh, most of you as, as well know that uh, that preachers have this tendency to uh, engage in alliteration in which we use the same letter to reflect a lot of different things. Sometimes people preach that way. I don't usually preach that way, but a lot of people do. And so we're, we've been calling this refresh and renew, and then we relocated. 
And as you know, we had services in the Woodlands and also in the Social Center in the evenings on Sundays throughout this five-month period. But now it's time to set the relocation aside, and we're going to return to the sanctuary. So it's refresh and renew and return. And finally, there is rejoicing, which tells us about the manner of our return. So we are really looking forward to this coming Sunday. Uh, let me share a few reflections on uh, these things. Uh, first of all, we're returning rejoicing because uh, we are going to be excited, I think, about uh, the nature of the changes that uh, we're going to experience and that you will see in the newly renovated Village Church. But in addition to that, there's a, there's a greater dimension of rejoicing that we're looking forward to. You know, we believers in Jesus are commanded to rejoice. Philippians tells us over and over again that no matter what our circumstances might be, we're to be a rejoicing people because we're a people who recognize what Jesus Christ has done for us beyond what we could ever do for ourselves. And with that in mind, we have uh, really devoted ourselves during these five months to this spiritual renewal in addition to the refreshment of our sanctuary. And that spiritual renewal makes us a genuinely rejoicing people. I'm reminded of the passage in, in Galatians chapter 5 where uh, we're told that we're supposed to live by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit. And we've made a conscious effort uh, to encourage our people, and uh, in fact that includes me, encourage myself to, to be spiritually minded people uh, during this time, even while we're dealing with nuts and bolts kinds of issues. And so we want to return rejoicing because a little bit earlier in that passage in Galatians 5, uh, we read that the fruit of the Spirit is love, and the second thing on the list is joy, as well as peace, patience, uh, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It's what happens when people have a genuine encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and who, having been filled with the Spirit of God, keep in step with the Spirit of God and are genuinely joyful people. And when we rejoice, we're expressing that joy, uh, which is infectious to others. So we're coming back to a sanctuary rejoicing, first of all, because obviously there are so many improvements, but mainly because uh, we're a renewed people. And we trust that that will be obvious and reflective of the kinds of uh, people that you'll make contact with as you come join us at the Village Church. So we're really looking forward to this coming Sunday as we get back into our own sanctuary, which will be a great blessing not only to the Village Church, but also to the Shell Point community in general. Blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us for Village Church Connections. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we head down to the water for a look at Shell Point's Susie Q as she prepares for another season of cruising the waters of Southwest Florida. Herb Sklar will be back to talk about palette knife painting and all aboard for a trip to the Gulf Coast Model Railroad as it gets set to open for another season right here at Shell Point. Until then, this is Shell Point today for Monday, September 29th. I'm Josh Milton. And for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.